This is the first of a two-part video on anonymous functions in MATLAB. In this video, we'll learn about anonymous functions and the associated fplot command. In the next video, we'll jump into MATLAB to do some examples. An anonymous function is a simple, one-line function. The emphasis is on simple. Typically, anonymous functions are used to do a quick or computationally light calculation, such as unit conversions and finding the value of an equation at a given point. Like user-defined functions, anonymous functions can accept multiple inputs. Unlike user-defined functions, anonymous functions are restricted to only one output. This is because anonymous functions are intended to be simple. The greatest advantage of an anonymous function is that unlike a user-defined function, anonymous functions don't have to be stored in a separate M file. Instead, anonymous functions are stored in a single variable within the script. This is advantageous because it reduces the number of files needed to write a complicated code. Instead of having a standalone function m file for every trivial task, you can just make a bunch of anonymous functions within your script. The syntax of an anonymous function is as follows. First, you define the function handle. A function handle is basically the variable storing the anonymous function. After the equal sign, you type the at symbol, which is the signature characteristic of an anonymous function. The at symbol is followed by the list of input arguments your anonymous function accepts in parentheses. Once again, you can have as many input arguments as you need. Input 1 and input 2 correspond to the arguments that are passed to the function, just like any other kind of function. Right after you close the parentheses, you write the equation. Here's an example of constructing an anonymous function. We'll do more intensive examples in the second video, but here's a quick one for illustrative purposes. This anonymous function converts a speed from kilometers per hour to meters per second. It's called KMH to MPS. It accepts one argument, VKMH, and it's multiplied by the appropriate conversion factor. To call the anonymous function, we first declare a variable holding the speed we want to convert. In this case, we want to convert 80 kilometers per hour to meters per second. We call the km to MPS function and supply the VKMH variable as the input to the function and we store the result in the vmps variable. Just like any other function, the name of the input variable we give doesn't have to match the argument's name in the anonymous function declaration. We can call the kmh to mps function using this monstrosity of variable name. When we do so, it'll work just fine. Since anonymous functions are commonly used to create simple math equations like trig functions, logarithms, and more, it would be nice to have some way to visualize them. Thankfully, the built-in fplot function does exactly that. You can consider the fplot function to be the equivalent of the plot function, but specifically for anonymous functions. The syntax does differ slightly from the plot command. fplot accepts the function handle of the anonymous function, followed by a two-element vector containing the lower and upper x limits on the plot. You can optionally provide additional arguments to customize the appearance of your plot, like the line width. The fplot command is a really nice shortcut because you only have to specify the x limits, not a vector of points spanning the limits. fplot is smart enough to automatically analyze the anonymous function you provide, and it decides how many values to use so that the plot will exhibit all the notable features and curves of the function. Here's an example of the fplot command in action. First, we define an anonymous function called my square, which just squares the given x value. Then, we issue the fplot command, giving it the my square function handle and the x-axis limits. We can see that the plot goes from negative 2 to 2, just as we requested. We can get an identical plot by creating an identical anonymous function within the fplot function itself. In the second fplot statement here, we aren't providing a function handle. Rather, we're just making a new anonymous function that does the same thing as the my square anonymous function. Of course, I don't recommend this method because you're technically hard coding an equation into the fplot command. When writing anonymous functions, be sure to vectorize thoroughly. Don't forget about the dot operator. This is critically important when using the fplot command. Here, I've redefined the my square anonymous function but removed the dot before the caret. When I issue the fplot command just as before, MATLAB throws me a bunch of warnings because the new mySquare function isn't vectorized. It's a warning, so the code will still run and you'll still get this graph, but be aware that the plot may be incredibly wrong if your anonymous function is not properly vectorized. 
Although I touched on this earlier, I'd like to have an entire slide dedicated to the difference between anonymous functions and user-defined functions. Both can have as many inputs as you want, but anonymous functions are limited to only one output. Anonymous functions are commonly used for simple math expressions and whatnot, so they're less versatile than user-defined functions. However, anonymous functions do have a complementary plotting function, fplot. There isn't really an equivalent of fplot for user-defined functions. Finally, anonymous functions are stored within the script you're writing. Although you can place user-defined functions at the very end of the script, that's considered bad practice and you really should be saving them as a standalone M file. You might be wondering what the utility of an anonymous function is. If it's so simple, why do we even need it? It turns out that MATLAB has a bunch of built-in functions which use and or require anonymous functions. This slide contains a sample of such functions. For example, the integral function computes the integral of the anonymous function you provide. You can write an anonymous function which represents a differential equation, and you can solve that differential equation using things like ODE45, ODE23S, or any of the other built-in MATLAB ODE solvers. I won't go over any more since the purpose of this slide is just to inform you of some commands which utilize anonymous functions, but keep these in the back of your mind because we'll encounter them later in the course. We will not be using the functions down here in this class, but you might use them later on in your own MATLAB experience, so I threw them in just in case. That's all for this video. We quickly reviewed the syntax and formation of anonymous functions and the fplot command. In the next video, we'll do three examples in MATLAB. See you next time.